You got a sticker? Uh, who's got a Snickers? Ezra? Well, get up here, boy. Bring it. I need some strength right now. Uh, all right, James. Yeah, I got them right down here. James chapter number 3, verse number 1. Here's what we're going to begin reading right now. The Bible says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able to also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths, and that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven with fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, with the sword of the governor listeth. Even so, the, the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and, and the birds, and the serpents, and the things of the sea, and the tamed, hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith we bless therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith we curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and Fresh. I'm going to preach on this, the world's smallest but biggest troublemaker. Mm -hmm. The world's smallest but biggest troublemaker. Let's pray. Father, we love you, and I will thank you for the opportunity to be able to preach the word, Lord. I pray that you bless the preaching and teaching of your word. I pray that you help us in a mighty, mighty way, Lord. We need your help in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and just preach. All right, so Brother Burton, you just let your mouth go wild on the Muhammad Ali thing. Hey, I am. I, I mean that every bit of thing, everything I just said, I mean wholeheartedly, and don't have a problem, and and, and don't have to apologize for that, uh, because we do have heroes that are real. Uh, yeah, but I don't want to. I want to be careful not to get so uh, up in arms over something like that. But I want to talk to you tonight. Uh, why would God have me preach on the tongue tonight? Uh, really, I planned all week to preach on the family. Uh, and we're going to pray for our families. Uh, and then uh, as I was uh, uh, studying this morning and getting ready for the, the day center, I, I said, I'm going to preach on the tongue to them today over there. 90-year-old ladies and men. Uh, and uh, everybody has a problem with their tongue. And, and when I got done with that message, Lord helped me during that message because my tongue, I, I had to get right with some stuff as I preach. I have no problem admitting that to anybody. Uh, uh, but... I thought, you know what? I felt like the Lord was there. Told me, Paul, I think the Lord's leading me to preach this message tonight here. Uh, and, and so we really need to think about this and understand uh, what is going on. Let me say this. Every, anything and everything that was ever done on the face of this earth that was evil, anything and everything that was ever done on the face of this earth that was evil started from a tongue. Yeah. It started from someone's mouth. Uh, Hitler started from Hitler's mouth. Uh, uh, all these uh, uh, evils in these different places that started with an order or, or with the mouth. And, and, and today when we went to the nursing home today or the day center, Miss Annie said, oh, Pastor, I've been thinking about you all week, you guys. I just love that you come here. It's such a blessing. Just like that, 90 years old. And I said, Miss Annie, I appreciate that. And that really warmed me up. That really made me think, man, because sometimes the devil fights me and getting over there. But when we get there, I don't want to leave. I just want to sit there with him and talk to him. And I thought, man, that was a blessing, Miss Annie, what you just said to me. That makes me feel really good. And, and so our tongues can, can be good and our tongues can be bad. And, and the day and age that we live in, let me say this now, I understand this. The day and age that we live in, it is more politically correct to be nasty with your tongue than to be good with your tongue. 
Uh, to do nice things is, is, is very seldomly done. And to do nasty things and say bad things to people is done more often. Uh, James, it, in verse number, or chapter number 1, James was telling them how to be patient when there was trouble. And then chapter number 2, he was telling them how to practice the truth, how, how to live in truth. And then in this section, in chapter number 3, he talks about the power of the tongue and what the tongue is. And Christians were apparently having problems with their tongues when James wrote this letter, when the Holy Spirit of God burdened James to write this letter. Christians were having problems with their tongue. This is 2,000 years ago. And, and I already know that Christians are having problems with their tongues. I already believe 100% that there's a, a, a lot of us in this room, for the most part, have problems with our tongues and, and how we use them and how we say things. And, and really, we don't come to church. I don't come to church and hurt her and hurt her and hurt him and her. I, I do a lot of my hurt at home. Uh, and, and same with you. That's what I'm telling the problem with our tongue. And we put on our church clothes and our church face and come here and act like everything's just fine. We argue all the way to church, man. And then walk in that door and put that smile on and start amen and hallelujah and like everything's okay. And it's not okay. It, 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 it's, it's a lie. Uh, James says in James 1.19, be swift to hear. Slow to speak. Uh, slow to wrath. In James 1.26, he says, If you bridle, if a human that does not bridle his tongue has a vain religion. If you can't keep your big mouth shut, your religion's vain. And I'm afraid in our families and, 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 and lots of families around this country and in our know, Christian homes, our kids know that our religion is vain because we're different here than we are there. Now, I'm not saying we're not going to have some mishaps and some problems because we all are going to fold up. I guess that I would guess that all of us fold up every now and then and make a mistake with our mouth. Uh, it's the way it is, and and I I'm, I'm fair to tell you I do that, and, and I'm not preaching at you like you need to get it straight. I'm good, man. I'm just saying what the Bible says here, and so uh, look at what it says. It says in verse number one, "My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation." James was telling those guys. See, those guys all wanted to speak. They all wanted to talk. They all wanted to pastor. They all wanted to preach. They all wanted to tell everybody else how to live their life. And he says, be, be not many masters knowing that you shall receive the greater condemnation. Hey, if you're going to be a teacher, you're going to have to be held more accountable than everybody else. I, my judgment seat is going to be a lot rougher than your judgment seat because I'm going to be held accountable for every single word I said up here. Uh, and, and everything that goes on and everything in my life and how I've led and taught the people and given advice to folks and, and so, uh, but yours is going to be a great judgment seat too with your mouth and he says be not many masters, you know what I'm, I'm kind of uh, on this thing on, you know, uh, I, I've got a bunch of preacher friends on Facebook and, and, and I, I'm not going to knock any of them I'm not going to start getting too uh, elaborate here but a lot of these young 28 year old preachers have so much wisdom all of a sudden can tell us all how we're supposed to do it and how the church is supposed to be run and how everything's supposed to be and the family's supposed to be led and, and all that and how we're supposed to do everything. And they just got so much wisdom. And, and man, that, that, that just doesn't make me think, wow, that's great. How about, where did they get all this wisdom? No, no. They want to be teachers. They want to tell everybody how to do it, but they're not thinking about what they need to do. And, and so today, I, just wanted, I don't want to go past that verse. And then it says, for in many things we offend all. I mean, there are a lot of things we do. Listen to me now. I, 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 I want this to be a, a, a really good message for all of us to understand. But it is going to be a convicting message. And we need to make sure we have an open heart here to listen to this and understand what needs to happen here tonight. Okay? And it may not be as convicting for some. It may be more convicting for others. I, I've already got through my conviction preaching on it this morning. Uh, and, and, and I took my beating this morning as I preached on it. And, and so listen to me. Uh, the Bible says, for in many things we offend all. Which means this. We do a lot of things to offend people. Uh, not, not with the mouth, but we do a lot of things. I mean, I could, uh, uh, you know, Jessica wants to talk about the service. I'm like, ah. that would offend her if I did that. I would never do that anyway. I don't feel that way. Uh, if someone wants to talk to me, you again. 
Uh, uh, stop calling that. Or, or if I get a text message and, and don't answer it, that offends some folks. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I don't, I'm not, it's not a big, I'm not big on it. I mean, if you want to invite me to lunch, I'm like, okay, I'm coming. But most stuff I look at it and go, okay, that's nice. Uh, and most of the stuff's not questioned. They're not, I, people say, you didn't answer my text. Some of you have done that. You didn't answer my text. I said, you didn't ask me a question. You just stated something. I didn't know you wanted me to talk to text you back. You know, so we can offend people in a lot of different ways. Okay? Uh, and so God says this in his book. He says, if any, man off- if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. Let's stop now. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. And able to bridle the whole body. Perfect. Well, you mean the perfect. Nobody's perfect. Well, that's not what that, that word not that's necessarily meaning like to be perfect, flawless, do nothing. It actually means to be a mature or Christian, to be mature. I know Christians that have been 20 years in, uh, in church and been saved 20 years and are no more more uh, uh, mature than Dale is. Uh, I, I know some Christians have been Christians for two years and are the most mature Christians I know. And so it doesn't matter how long you've been saved, it matters if you can uh, not offend in word. He said, but brother, you offend all of us in word. Well, I preach and I may offend you in word. Or I may just be very direct and tell you the truth. But I never want to be nasty or mean to anybody. And I have been in certain ways, but most of the time when I've offended you, there was a lot of truth and it just could have been said a little bit better. Uh, and I, I understand that. I'm working on that. But God says if we're able to not offend anybody in word, we're a mature person. Now, we have to understand, how mature are we? Or do we have a bunch of babies? And really, we should remain babies. God says we can grow in this thing. Yeah. And we can bridle our mouths. And we can, we can do it the right way. And God wants us to. And, and God has a plan for us to do that. The tongue can, can praise God, preach, pray, uh, uh, lead people to Christ, and many things. And then it can ruin a man's reputation in a minute. It can talk behind somebody's back. And I hate people that talk behind people's back. You say, you shouldn't hate anybody. Well, I hate people that talk behind people's backs. That's not right. Uh, we, we should not do that. Uh, uh, hurt people's hearts. The ability to speak words uh, can influence people to do the right thing. Uh, the ability to, to speak words can also take people the wrong way. You're a leader in here. Everybody here is a leader, by the way. You're either leading for good or you're leading for wrong. Uh, and everybody will have a judgment seat if you're saved. And if you're not saved, you'll just go straight to hell. Uh, but if you are saved, you'll stand for the Lord. Or say you led here or you didn't lead here. You did this or you didn't do that. Uh, and I want to please the Lord is what it all really boils down to. Uh, and he says he's a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body. Man, if you can control this little thing, you have the ability to do a whole bunch. And that's what God says, man, I want to do a whole bunch for the Lord. So I have to grow with my mouth. And I'm not saying we won't have setbacks, folks. I'm not here to try to make everybody feel terrible, but I would like for everybody to, to get right with the Lord if, if, if you need to. Uh, that's why God would have us to preach the message. Uh, and so the, the tongue is a very, very powerful. Verses 1 through 4, the Bible says it has the power to direct. It has the power to direct. Look at verse 3. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. And behold, also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven with fair winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listed. Listen to me now. You think of a big, giant horse. Horses are very strong. You take a little bit which would be about that long probably, a little, like a little piece of metal, and you put it in his mouth, and it tames him very quickly. It makes him to be able to go wherever you want him to go. I don't know if you've ever ridden a horse, but you pull back on that thing, and they, the tame ones are going to listen to that. They're going to move whatever direction you want them to go. They're going to move. You think about these big ships. Think about that big ship down in South Philly. Who's ever seen that big ship parked up there in South Philly? 
That thing is giant. One of the big, I think it's bigger than the Titanic, they said. Uh, they has a thing in the back of it, which we call, be called a, a helm or, or whatever. There's a big piece of metal poking out the back of it. And, and it, whatever it does, if it goes like that, it turns the boat a certain way. If it goes like that, it turns the boat. It's very little, comparatively speaking, to how big the ship is. And, and God says the tongue has the power to direct like a bridle, a, a, a bit does a horse. The tongue has the power to direct like a helm does on the, the ship. And, and the tongue has the ability to direct here. I, I can, uh, uh, God gives us all gifts. Uh, God has given me the gift of speaking. Obviously because I'm a pastor and God wants me to be able to talk and, 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 and to say it and, and, and to say it right and to be able to read the Bible and different things. And so I could come in and, and, and tickle your ears and play with you and not lead you anywhere. Or we could come in and preach exactly thus saith the Lord in the Bible and it will direct you in a better direction. Our lives have been changed in this room on Thursday night. Look around. Thursday night, we've got people in here. Uh, the lives have been changed by the preaching and teaching of the Word of God that comes from the tongue. And God wants us to be moving around. has the power to direct. And I'm just going to ask you, young people, old people, how old of you? Where does your tongue direct? I mean, where does it direct? The, 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 when somebody thinks about your tongue right now, your kids, when they think about your tongue, what do they think? Your wife, when she thinks about your tongue, what does she think? Your husband, when he thinks about your tongue, what does he think? Uh, you, you, you understand? I mean, uh, when I was in El Dorado, uh, we would sit out in the choir walk before the service, and all the choir members would sit out here before the service, and we'd walk in together and sing. Well, sometimes Brother Weedo would come, and everybody, shh, Brother Weedo. And I'm thinking, man, God's here. What, what are they talking about? Why would everybody shoot down when Brother Weedo come? And, and, and listen, a, a lot of you, maybe your, your, your talk would be a little bit different when I'm around. Uh, I, I'm glad it would be. I don't want to hear anything that I shouldn't hear or have to hear anything I shouldn't hear to have to hear. But God hears it. And so you've got the power to direct lives with your tongue. What do we need to pray about tonight, brother? We need to pray about our tongues. We're, 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 listen to me. I promise you, uh, there are folks in here that are double people. The double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Uh, I, I don't care how passionate you are soul winning, how much you read your Bible, how much you sit in this church, how much you give. If you are tearing people down with your tongue, you're a miniature Christian. And God doesn't want that. And, and, and listen to me, uh, we have to get right with the Lord, and I have to get right a lot. My, my, my old man is what I battle with, and we all battle with our old man. But we've we got to grow. And I'd like to think that I have grown in 13 years. I, I know that I have it with my mouth. And, 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 and it doesn't matter. I mean, there's times when I'll say something else. And I say, man, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. And then my wife, uh, sometimes, honey, I, say, I, I shouldn't have said that. And, and she'll look at me, she goes, you know, he means that. Okay. And she knows we make mistakes. And our kids make mistakes. I've had, I've had teenagers in this church in the last seven years that called me up on the phone and said, Pastor, my mom's down here cussing at me right now. I've had uh, teenagers say, you wouldn't believe what my parents are doing, saying at home. Uh, I've had young people saying that and, and different things. And, and, and listen, that just showed what their spiritual maturity is. And, and some of them aren't going to be changed right away. Some of you young people got new parents and new Christians. They're not going to change right away. But little by little, and our kids aren't going to change right away. But we've got to make strides to change. And God says it has the power to direct. It, it, it can move that horse with that little tongue, will move your body, will move this church, will move your family. Your tongue is directing your family. Your tongue is directing your family. Mama, your tongue is showing your daughter how to treat her husband. Uh, and, 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 and daddy, your daughter, your, your tongue is showing your boy how to treat his wife and showing your daughter how what kind of husband she's supposed to have. And that's, that's directing. I, I mean, it is. And, and, and often I'll think, and I'm not trying to throw any fire or water on anybody's fire, but, but I think ours are still young, and maybe they won't remember that, what we've done sometimes. Maybe they won't remember that part. Maybe we put enough good into them now that we can keep, we can turn things around. And some of us are got in this thing late, man, but dude, your kids ought to see something new. Well, I, I can tell how you sit in this church to know what's going on with most married couples every service. I mean, it's just, it's easy. It's, it, it, it's, it's very simple body language. Look at Brother Brazella. He's going on about his life. Now, they're happy. She tore him down with her mouth on the way in here, and now he forgave her. Thank you, 
brother. Thank you. That's a blessing. Anybody else want to get closer? Hey. Hey, those those uh those teachers, he said, look, and you're gonna you're gonna have to be judged by God. And you better be careful because we offend in a lot of ways. And, and the bit and the rubber rubber overcome great forces. Great forces is a little bit. Great force is that little rudder. Hey, we can overcome great forces with our mouth, with our tongue. Uh, the human tongue uh, can can overcome contrary forces. I mean, the old nature wants to control us, and our circumstances around us want us to say things we shouldn't say, and sin on the inside pressures us on the outside. Man, the sin on the inside. If it comes out of your mouth, it was in your heart. Uh, and, and so, uh, but listen to this. I, I wrote this down. Uh, both the bit and the rudder must be under the control of a strong hand. Yeah. You understand that? If you're on that horse and you don't know how to ride a horse, you're not going to be able to control that, that horse. But if you have a strong hand, you know how to hold a horse. Or, or, or Brother Cordell in the Navy, the person driving the ship's got to know what to do. And so it has to be under a strong hand, just in our mouth. They have to be under a strong hand. Well, who's that? The Lord. With the Lord. And say, so we can't teach no dog new tricks. That's a, you're not dogs. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can do, do, do new tricks. You can. It just takes want to. It takes uh, humbling yourself and not being prideful and not thinking that, uh, uh, that it's a cultural difference. I mean, I heard that so much in the beginning here, but that's just the way we are, Pastor. It's our culture. Shut up. That's dumb. <laughs> that we are Christians. That, there ain't no way that that has to be like that. Uh, it, that's silliness. That's not culture. That's called being what you always have been and not changing to what God wants you to be. And so we have the power to direct. Uh, I, 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 you know, it, it's just the Lord wants us to direct with our tongue. And look, how is your tongue directed? I mean, you're going to stand before the Lord with that mouth. And you may, most people don't even think about the judgment seat. But I think about it all the time. And I'm going to have to stand before him. And I hope when I get before him, calls, he says, he sees me coming, and he's like, oh, whoa. But you did get right, Bert. You did, you, did keep, you did have a heart for me, and you kept getting right. Some of us stand before him and say, no, nah, you never got right. You just thought you had it going. You just, you know, you had too much pride. And you're going to stand before him. And, and man, like, look, God says our husbands to love our wives like Christ died for the church. He loved the church. And wives, submit, and children, obey, for this is right in the Lord, man. And, and, and to talk back. I mean, I'm trying to teach my kids now not to talk. Oh, my kids. Talk back. Uh, and, and it's just getting, you know, uh, that I feel I'm saying nothing back to me. You say something, that's it. And, and we, we, we've got all kinds of different punishments for We don't want talk back kids. Uh, and, and, and so, power to direct. Jesus controls our tongue. We don't have to worry about doing the wrong things. Problem is, Jesus ain't controlling a lot of our tongues. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Solomon said that the most wise person ever to live and to ever will, that ever will live, Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. David prayed, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth and keep the door of my lip and incline not my heart to any evil Thing. It's the tongue. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Listen, we affect lives with our tongues. I mean, I, I'm just telling you tonight, uh, everybody's praying, and that's okay. I, I'm just telling you, a soft answer turneth away wrath. But grievous words stirreth up anger. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. Let me tell a lie. You're an abomination to God. That's a strong word. He says the same thing about homosexuality. An abomination. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. And so it has the power to direct. Number one. Number two, it has the power to destroy. Look at the next verses there. Uh, verses 5 through 8. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a little matter, a gr I'm sorry, behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Listen to me now. California, Montana, when we did over in Montana last year, they said, you can't go down towards here, we're, we're going to take a trip. Because we can't go down there, it's all on fire down there. 
Smoke everywhere. Remember the smoke? Yeah, the smoke smell there in Montana. The smoke everywhere. The whole place is on fire. It's all dry. Sometimes people take little, start go camping and stuff and start a little fire. Take a match and throw it out and it just burns everything up. Uh, and it just starts from a little match. But how, how, how great a, a, a little matter. Uh, it, behold how great it happens from just a little match. The power to destroy. That little tongue will destroy my mom. I, I used to destroy my mom with her when my tongue was a kid. My dad wasn't in town. He'd be gone for two weeks straight. We go to the field, it was called, go out and do tag or, uh, 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 exercises for the military. And he was always going, when he gone, man, I would destroy him. And she wouldn't, she wouldn't tell him when he came home, but she didn't want him to kill me. Because she knew he really would. Uh, and, and, man, I just beat her up with my tongue. My mom still has, has feelings. Like, I say one little thing to her, and it takes her back to when I was a kid. And I'm like, Mom, I, I didn't mean it like that. And I just see that it affected her. Uh, listen, it destroys lives, the tongue does. Teenager, you destroy your mom and dad when you talk back to them in that nasty rhythm. Mom, they destroy your kids when you just, when you when you talk bad to your kids or your husband or your wife or, or the workplace or behind people's backs. Power to destroy. I know my tongue <coughs> just the last couple days got out of control. I'm glad the Lord gave me this message for me to be for, to preach to me, Brother Paul, this morning in the nursing home. Uh, uh, Proverbs 26, 20, where no wood is, the fire goeth out. So where there is no tailbearer, the strife ceaseth. As coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle, to kindle strife. God says if there's no telling lies, the strife will cease. The tongue, uh, uh, like a fire, no man can die. Take it. It, it. it destroys everything. Look what it says in verse number 7. For every kind of beast and bird, the birds and the serpents and everything in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind, but the tongue can no man tame. It's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. And so that's why we got to be careful. Guys, I've said this before. The greatest thing I can do when something controversial happens is wait 10 minutes and pray. Because then I usually have really good things to say after that. If I can give it 10 minutes, I, I can come up with the right answer. And I wish, you know, I wish I did that all the time. Uh, but if I speak right away, man, oh, yeah. it can be bad. And, and, you know, it can be bad. And, and folks, we all have things in our life that makes us angry, and, and family members that mistreat us, and, and co-workers that don't like us. And, and listen, everybody goes through it. If you're not if you're not getting any flack from anybody, then you're not being very godly. Uh, you know, it all they all go through it. But we got to be careful to use our mouth the right way. We don't want to have all, all the time off-colored jokes and. Uh, and, and, and different things around people because we can destroy lives with that stuff. Uh, you know, I like talking about basketball and all that stuff, but, but I'd much rather talk to them boys about the Lord and about something good than about Steph Curry and LeBron James. I like watching both of them play. Enjoyed it. But, man, if that's all I'm talking about, I'm not doing nothing but helping them to, to idolize men on TV. Uh, and, 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 you know, it's just a far chance that anybody ever becomes any of that stuff. But if we're talking about the Lord and saying, hey, look, let's, let's, let's think, what, about, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Man, we can destroy lives with our tongues. And, and the fire can get really out of control uh, with our tongue. A fire starts small and gets big very, very quickly. Uh, and, and let me give you this one. We're going to get to pray in here. Uh, let's skip down here. Uh, look at verse number 9. The power to, to direct, the power to destroy, and the power to delight. Uh, look at verse 9. Therewith we bless God, even the Father, and therewith we curse men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed to blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. You know, that's the, that's the, that's the, the, the argument on the way to church. And... And then coming in here and then praise the Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah Pastor. It's great. I don't know. It ain't great. 
Y'all ought to just skip me and come down here and get right with the Lord. And, and say, Lord, man, I, I'm blue. And, and you can't get right with the Lord till you get right with the person he was just upset with. And, and, and this one doesn't work that way. Uh, you, you know, and so we could just use our mouth for good on Sundays. You ought to just wake up. I've told you this many times. Devil comes the greatest on Sundays and Thursdays. Uh, to my house, anyway. And I just thank God I don't have to I just leave. Uh, uh, but, but somebody can't get drive in together all that. Why does somebody be an adult and, and let it go? And, 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 and delight and, and pray for their, their significant other. Pray for their kids or the kids. Pray for the mama having a hard time. And young people, listen to me. I know you got it rough. But it ain't easy on our end either uh, to, to do everything. I mean, uh, and my kids need every kind of clothes you can think of right now. And I'm broke. I'm like, well, you know, we'll figure it out. Uh, you know, and there's things that we have to think of, stress that we have. But there's also stress for our kids. But I can't take it out on them. Uh, today, Dale, uh, Millie, Daddy, Dale just took a bite of my sandwich. And, and I've said many times, well, you know, I know it's no big deal, whatever, but we feel like that everybody should have their own personal space. And, and we've told Dale, that Dale, stop eating your food. And I know he's hungry, he's growing quick. And I'm like, did you eat your food? He goes, yeah. I said, oh, get upstairs, that's it. Go sit in your room for a while. I was ticked off at him. And he starts going upstairs. I'm like, Dale, come back. And I'm thinking, what a capital offense. I wanted to kill him over that bite of the sandwich. And I said, Dale, Daddy, Daddy overreacted. I'm sorry. It's really not that big a deal. But I have told you many times to stop eating their food. Please do what we tell you to do. Because I'm tired of telling you the same old thing over and over. And I thought, well, I figured out a long time ago. My kids, I have to tell them over and over again. Now, there is discipline issues and things you should do to discipline the kids. But I really got a little wild with him. I'm like, get upstairs. That's it. You're done. And over a bite of her sandwich. And, and, he, and he thought it was funny. And then I thought back to me as kids. I mean, man, you know, we used to eat everybody's sandwich. <laughs> we used to play this game in high school. If you had something in your left hand, it was called left hand give up. Anything in the left hand, you had to give it up. And, and it was going to be a big cheeseburger. Left hand give up, and they'd be like, and you could take the biggest bite you wanted out of it, the biggest drink or whatever. I mean, it was just great to see someone with something in their left hand. And we just wanted to eat everything. Uh, and I eat her food. But she ain't looking. Oh, where's Dale get it from? It's from me. And she eats my food. But nobody believes that. <laughs> hey, listen. I said, Dale, it is kind of funny that you did that. But let's not do that. Let's just leave the girls alone. These girls, man, they're always trying to get Dale. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm thinking, you girls, just leave him alone, man. Talk to the man in this house. Hey, listen. I'm afraid of you for everybody. That's why you stand in front of the dominant. No reason. Are you directing good or bad? Are you destroying people with your tongue? Or are you delighting with man? God says, how dare you curse mankind and then try to talk good in front of everybody else about God? God, doesn't, he, he's not pleasured at all by your phony amen or your singing in the choir or anything. I mean, you can get your, you can get light, you can get right with God right away. There have been many times when me and her could have went head to head. And I said, let's just stop here. I'm sorry. I should not have said that. I was wrong with that one. We love each other, hug, and it's all good. There have been many times when we lasted two days. Man, well, not many times. There's only been a couple of times in our marriage when we lasted two days. And, and so, uh, you know, what is it going to be, man? We just have to get right with the Lord. You guys got to start. We got to get right with God, man, on our tongue. I don't care what your family did to you. You lash out there with your tongue. It doesn't matter what they did. You just took it off of them, and now you're involved. You say, well, they're just so messed up. No, you are too, because you just lashed out with your tongue. And you're just as messed up as they are. So, no, nah, I don't believe that way. Well, believe what you want to believe. Uh, but, but God says you're not. Don't praise God and curse man. 
and then, then you and your family do the wrong things, and you get mad at them and yell at them and scream at them and tell them how big of a loser they are, is exactly what God's talking about there. And so tonight, we're just going to get around the altar and pray. Uh, believe me, we could all pray about this one thing. I, I don't, and not everybody. I, I understand that a lot of folks don't have a problem with their mouth. Uh, maybe a few in here, uh, and I, I, I. But I know most of us do, because you know we didn't preach on the family. We preached on the tongue, uh, and was prepared to preach on the family. Uh, and so let's get around the altar tonight and pray for our families and our tongues. And listen to me, young people, mamas and daddies, you hold each other accountable. You know, a husband's wise, hey, you know, let's try to, let's try to do what the, the Bible says, what, what, what Pastor preached on. And let's get right. It just takes a little bit of, of getting right to change who you are. You know what I mean? And, you know, we can just go on fighting and abuse people our tongue and say that's just the way I am, which is, 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 is dumb. First of all, because God never saved you to leave you where you found you. And, and, and God wants you to change. And think about, you know, who you are and what you want to be, man. I, that, that's Miss Annie. I mean, I'm telling you, that lady is the sweet, sweetest lady in the world. She's 90, but I believe she really walked with the Lord her whole life. And she's just sweet on God. And you can just see, she's like an angel in that wheelchair. It's unbelievable. And I want to be like that. And, and, and listen, and, and I, I, I'm not letting everybody off the hook by trying to say that I'm the big loser. I, I, I want to get right with the Lord, be right with the Lord, and walk around well right with the Lord. Uh, and, and, and have a life that would, that would be glorifying to God. And God would say, you know, because wherever you are, God's there. So your little talk, you ain't hidden from anybody. We send our kids down upstairs, all that, and argue, but God's right there, and he's going, what is going on? When me and her argue, just recently, me and her arguing, KK's like, Daddy, just go over there and hug her right now. And I'm like, I'm not hugging her. And she's like, why not? And she just doesn't understand. And I'm like, she don't want to hug her. And, and I should have just said, you're right, KK. I'm going to give her a hug. And got right. And, and, and I did later. Uh, and, but, but you know what I mean? And so it's just, it's just all about our pride. Only about pride cometh contention. Bob said, only by pride cometh contention. So now let me tell you what that means. Every contentious thing you have in your life is because of your pride or somebody else's pride, which brings your pride up pretty quickly. It's hard not to be prideful when someone's prideful to you. And so only by pride cometh contention. Let's pray. Let's get out of the Lord. I'll close this out in just a few minutes. Our right, God wants you to, to help you. I, I, I said this in that nursing home day. I said, um, some of y'all just got smacked around. And one lady, 67-year-old lady, said, Pastor, you got me. I need to do right with my mouth. And she just got to pray. And so let's get right with the Lord. Maybe you ain't got a problem with your mouth. That's good. And, and I'm happy for you. I really am.